a very good uh, a very good afternoon evening morning wherever you are and welcome to remix play for uh playful education for change uh my name is Sil Sylvester Arnab and I'm a, a professor in game science at Coventry University in the UK and I'm co-chairing this session with Alex Master who is a designer technologist as well as a practice-based researcher at the university so remix play 4 is co-hosted by the ACES project uh, which is funded under the Global um, Challenges Research Fund alongside the Game Changes Initiative, um, Disruptive Media Learning Lab, um, the Center for Post Digital Cultures, and the Center for Global Learning. Um, we are recording the session today so that we can share it on the website. After, if you're not comfortable with being recorded, uh, please turn your video off. Um, thank you very much. Um, and feel free to take snapshots uh, of the screen today and share it on Twitter. Um, the hashtag is Remix Play 4. And the agenda for today, um, it, it will be quite short. So um, we will introduce uh, Remix Play, the community, as well as the video collections, uh, which we have released um, throughout June. Um, we, we will also have the in interactive activity based on the remixing play approach and a chance to own the physical copy of the remixing play flashcard. So I have it here with me. And we will end with a discussion session um, on our shared interests and what to expect next so that we can build a community and we can follow up the session. So the Remix Play Summit is an annual event uh, where practitioners, researchers and designers of playful learning come together to explore the different aspects of play and how they can achieve serious purposes. And we have explored play in general um, in Remix Play 1. Um, we explored playful co-creativity in Remix Play 2 and playful inspiration for social innovation in, in Remix Play 3, um, where we had talks, discussion, and hands-on activities. Unfortunately, this year we will have to do it differently uh, with Remix Play 4. Um, the theme is playful education for change, as I've mentioned before, and it is our first attempt at an unwebinar format where we have been collecting practice examples from the various countries and showcase them as part of the living remix play video collection prior to this live event. And a huge thank you to the organizing team, especially um, Rachel and Sarah, who are here today, who have helped co co coordinate all the sessions as well as processing all the videos that are currently in the collection. So thank you very much to um, the team. So there are three live one hour sessions. Uh, one session was hosted at 4 a.m. UK time this morning by our colleague in Malaysia for the Asia Pacific time zone. And unfortunately I was still in bed then. So um, I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to catch it, but the video will be released on the website. And another one will be at 4 p.m. this afternoon for the South Central and North America time zone. And our aim is very much around creating and launching a community of practice, research and development by showcasing inspirations from video contents, because it's good for us to learn from different exemplars from the different countries and different communities and see which one that we could adapt and adopt and perhaps we could build a community around that. Um, we will also share all the recordings of the sessions on the uh, website once everything has um, completed by the end of today. So we have currently showcased um, 17 examples and case studies from 11 countries, not 13, uh, across the world, highlighting the following aspects, uh, playfulness, inclusive and, and equitable education, social change and community orientation. And each video or video collection has its own landing page with discussion section where anyone can be involved in giving feedback or initiate discourse on that particular page. So feel free to visit all of these videos um, if you have not done so, and and and, and then you can start conversations there. And, and, and we have a few of the contributors here today with us in this session. We have Shubna from the UK who talk about esports in the communities, and we have James and Alex on Kodabai Miners and James is based in Japan and Alex in the UK. Anne Lewis is based in Canada and uh, she talked about the university playground and we, and we also have Kim 
from Australia uh, who talk about Minecraft and the um, resilience of young Australians. And we also have Gilson from Brazil uh, who talk about uh, a game uh, which was used for justice in Brazil. Um, and I think we also have Fitri here today who um, was, uh, was the chair for the Asia Pacific session at four um, o'clock in the morning, uh, British summer time this morning. And Carlo and Luca who will be chairing the four o'clock, uh, uh, Carlo, Luca and uh, Gilson who will be chairing the 4 p.m. session this afternoon. And I hope that I don't miss anyone else. Um, but you will hear more about the initiative and the discussion sessions where we would encourage everyone to contribute towards the discussion around playfulness and as well as education and social change. And please take your time um, to watch the videos and if you have not done so. And feel free to strike conversations on the landing pages of the videos and form partnerships with those who are uh, uh, who are showcased in those videos, you know, in terms of publications, practice adoption, perhaps funding collaborations, uh, so on and so forth. So we, we want to have an open community where anyone can actually get involved with each other's uh, practices. And the video collection will be expanded with more practice, research and development exemplars. And we would put a call out for everyone, for anyone who wants to showcase their work, please let us know. And we will um, um, uh, show you how you can actually do that later on. And next, uh, we will show you the snapshots from these videos, the exemplars that we have uh, showcased so far. So you can see roughly what everyone is talking about. And hopefully that will inspire you to, to contribute or to perhaps adapt and adopt some of the stuff that our colleagues are doing in so many different countries. creating this uh, wonderful small space we call it dream space to increase you have fun in the, our learning to create a fun learning environment we we actually started to role play okay btt is a fun brain exercise game to help my special needs students in areas like thinking memory spatial relation attention and imagination which will enhance their learning functions on the whole. Trevetet abarca lo que es la definición por el código niño niño adolescente vigente en Bolivia, los distintos tipos, los efectos que trae consigo y como plus los 10 derechos fundamentales de los niños por quién. Se necesitan otro tipo de abordajes para tratar la problemática y Atrévete es una de ellas. Mantiene la esencia del juego pero también se aprende. Muchas gracias. Uh, uh, since March 2020 until now, a whole year, I can see a really strong interest in adopting playful learning and gamification approaches. We prepared a digital playground. The digital playground accommodated all of the games we have designed. The contents of the games revolve around SK Simpox math and science teachers' input. Dan mainkan gamenya dengan menyentuh buah anggur sesuai dengan arah panah yang diinginkan. Ini bukan. Di sini anak-anak akan menyatukan potongan-potongan yang sesuai menggunakan pengetahuan dan juga kekreatifan mereka. Eu gostei bastante do jogo, né? Eu aprendi a a trabalhar em equipe porque no jogo a gente fez eh uma equipe de três e aí a gente trabalhou em equipe lá e isso eu gostei bastante. A gente resolveu, a gente conseguiu resolver os, os problemas que tinha para resolver. Eu gostei bastante porque teve bastante comunicação entre os, entre os, os amigos, né? Um, in terms of the activity development as well, uh, behind us here is a guess who activity. So you can see there are a number of characters, all with different um, makeup and attire and eye color and, and things like this that we can then use as a pair work activity to practice items of clothing or 
eyes, body, body parts, you know, all of these kinds of things. So the, the server really lends itself to this playful um, game-based um, learning approach, really. It was to play Concordia, most importantly, to play and have fun. So the purpose of the clubs that we ran doing Concordia was that the children that participated had fun. Because at the end of the day, children are children. They need to play. They need to do something. Kids are always curious. And kids also, we know children learn by doing. We want education accessible for everyone. Imagine you're looking out of your window. It doesn't matter what country you're in. France, Ukraine, the United States of America, I'm sure you can see and find many problems. That, that's the easy part. Finding these solutions, that's the hard part. And that's why we all join this EdTech Masters so that we can find these problems. We have 28 different countries represented in about 50 different students. And the main problem, the main contextual challenges that we face are we lack of uh, digital learning opportunities. But for me, I do believe that everyone deserves their own learning opportunity and digitals can empower them to learn more and to have a deep learning about their world and to expand their horizons. Such as for internet connection, uh, not all students effort to buy electronic devices to learn and different students have different learning abilities. No one wants to be left behind. So this issue of lack of access and facilities have also resonated more so during this pandemic. So even though we cannot go online 100%, there are activities that we let them do as long as the learning still go on at home. But when we're doing things online, I'm not sure whether I'm talking to the kids or I'm talking to the parents because who's holding the phone? <laughs> so I have to be careful the language I use, the tone I have, to then ensure that I'm actually talking politely, differently, because when you talk to adults to teach, it's a different um, tone, different way of speaking, especially when you talk kids, you have to bring in a different language so that they can understand you. In Bolivia, there is still a great quantity of children, especially children, who have abandoned their studies for not being able to translate desde sus hogares ubicados en las pequeñas comunidades rurales hasta los colegios secundarios ubicados en las poblaciones mayores. No, o, o propose. Acho que, que es, es una mano, una mano virtual, es un abrazo virtual, ¿no? Que vos se consigue hacer con los alumnos. So Coventry Crosshairs work hard to create a safe environment for young people from diverse backgrounds. We can expand and create further opportunities for young people to participate and expand the horizon. And, and the question I like to ask is, how can we be symbiable? Symbi symbiable being a, a portmanteau word that brings them together the two concepts of symbiosis and viability. So in other words, how can we work in a way where we're, uh, we're working in symbiosis with the environment and with each other and we also can be viable in such a way that we can live together on this planet for a very long time. There's been some long-standing issues in our education surrounding the inclusion of pro-social themes and ethical content into the curriculum there. Fragments of Him as a game, as a story that it creates, directly addresses themes of sexuality, coming out, grief, and to some extent also generational differences in the perception of um, our rights as individuals. We needed an example, um, and I needed an example, particularly in my teaching, to stimulate discussion, including representation of women and minorities in games. The new context of education and all the um, 21st century learning and new expectations that are coming about because of changes in society, um, changes in sustainability, changes in how the world is operating, changes, digital changes, um, look, means we've got new expectations about ability to communicate, ability to work in teams, adaptability to change. All of these things are going to be so important for children in the future. In terms of the impact of the server, uh, I know multiple people that have gone on to pass the Japanese language proficiency test uh, after doing activities here and becoming motivated to learn Japanese to a higher level. And I've also had 
conversely, I've had English learners, I've had Japanese students of mine um, come onto the server as Japanese teachers, but then become very proficient in English at the same time. Utamanya di waktu pandemi, kami harus berimprovisasi dengan kondisi di mana uh, di lapangan kita di Indonesia tidak diperbolehkan untuk bertatap muka. Di situ kami juga melihat bahwa antusiasme peserta dan bagaimana uh, apa ya tingkat interaksi mereka cukup tinggi. Utamanya di waktu pandemi ini mereka masih tetap semangat belajar, masih tetap semangat dalam mencari ilmu dan berbagi kebaikan. Jogo também a mim porque é, nos faz enxergar que a gente jovem agora a gente pode mudar o mundo. Bastante da experiência e uma coisa que eu espero é que a resolução que a gente tenha dado né dos problemas sejam levados em consideração. Talvez alguém algum dia veja o vídeo e, e goste de uma ideia que a gente deu e realmente faça ou até mesmo a gente que participou do jogo bom é isso aí é como se o desenvolvimento é, esse jogo e esse tipo de pedagogia né ele pudesse favorecer o desenvolvimento da virtude virtude é uma coisa que é, a gente não, não aprende na escola. Então, é, é um conjunto, e, e eu acho que, como você fala na virtude, a gente está aprendendo a ser, né? A gente está também é, aprendendo não só matemática, português, e toda a geografia, história e tal, mas a gente está aprendendo a ser. Então, através das experiências, as jovens vão obter novas skills e desenvolver as skills que eles já têm. Os gamers are able to transfer the pro-social skills that they learn from multiplayer gameplay to peer and family relations as well as improving social and emotional skills. We kind of uh, help each other to, to see what can be done. For example, in remote schools or in uh, rural areas, a teacher may need to use a different approach uh, instead of depending on the online tools. We need women. Now, what am I saying? We don't need women. These are not women. These are superheroes. So we have corporate superheroes, school superheroes, university superheroes, community superheroes, and NGO superheroes. And those are our partners and our mentors and the people who will us help us enact learning as we go through the challenges. So what we do is we reinvite people inside the university system and we plant the challenges as seeds and then we let the superheroes mingle with the students bring them back inside see what can happen i try to invite experts from the outside to introduce robotics and coding programs to our kids this see here actually we have connected to asian community dan rocky fay bergerak dalam pendampingan riset pelatihan dan workshop utamanya di komunitas-komunitas. Kami mengajak komunitas di Solo mengajar untuk ikut bersama kami, ikut mengeluarkan workshop, mereka berpartisipasi dan uh, we are a growing international community of more than 80 students all around the world. Thanks to this community, we are able to make different initiatives, initiative in different local scales, such as a maker space in a secondary schools or an application on the web to help the students to practice exams. Sin embargo, los niños y jóvenes de las casas de saber, por estar expuestos a una formación incompleta, impartida con metodologías ajenas a su realidad, por lo general son poco receptivos a una educación tradicional. Y por lo mismo, las clases en aula, las charlas, los dictados, etc., les resulta muy poco motivantes. Conscientes de ello, hemos promovido una práctica educativa alternativa fundamentada en procedimientos lúdicos. El trabajo educativo amparado en el juego nos ha demostrado que es la mejor forma de trabajo con los niños rurales. Los motiva mucho, los divierte les permite aprender en un contexto diferente al convencional. 
y lo más importante, lo hacen en interacción armónica con otros niños y jóvenes, aprendiendo unos de otros. So it started as an English language learning server, but I invited a number of Redditors, people that use Reddit, to come and help my students learn uh, English. And once the course finished, my Japanese students kind of left the server and I was left with um, a population of students that wanted to learn Japanese. So we flipped the, the concept of the, the server on its head from an English learning server to a Japanese learning server. And since then, I've had many wonderful builders come on here and create these buildings as a kind of immersive environment for learning Japanese. Um, we think that we can help change something in the community and to work with the more teachers and more students in the rural areas, especially the teachers at the disadvantaged areas. There is still room for progress for both me as an educator and also the community, the students. So creativity has no limit. It can go both ways, offline and offline. So we need you. Um, and thank you very much to those who have contributed to the um, collection of exemplars. And we need you and those you know who are impacting their community by the means of playful and creative education, because we wish to showcase as many inspirations as possible. This is the only way that we can actually learn from each other, I, I believe, through providing examples and providing some of the different things that we have done in our community that can actually help um, you know, different communities in different parts of the world. So um, if you contribute towards the 10 minute video to showcase your uh, practice, we will, create, we will create a landing page for your video. Um, and there is now a link to the expression of the interest for the video contribution, as well as a call for anyone who would like to partner with us in running specific activities. And that link is on the main website for Remix Play 4, so you can uh, submit your ex expression of interest and then we can follow, follow it up with you and then discuss with you on how we can actually partner uh, in this. So on the screen is a word cloud that illustrates the interest from all the participants who have registered or pre-registered for all the three sessions. So you can see that a lot of interest in education, in games, in STEM, in the community and learning in playfulness. Um, so you can see there's so many different um, um, needs and also different interests um, that can be shared uh, among all of us. Um, so we can actually help each other in terms of linking everyone to the different inspirations that can help them in the practice. And let's see who we are in this session, the specific session today. Um, this is the word cloud from the interest provided by all the uh, participants in this session. And you can see uh, there are a lot of interest in community and playful, as you can see there, social and cultural. So it's quite interesting to see um, the, 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 the interest that is very much focusing on the community base, the community approach and the community needs, which we can actually definitely talk about and follow up on uh, beyond uh, this particular session today. So there are some great interests and needs and, and opportunities on here that we can look at. So um, now that we roughly know the broad interests of the group, uh, it is time for us to exercise our creative muscles. Um, we can be a bit creative and see if we can rapidly create new playful ideas. So this is just to encourage us to keep it simple, to think that you know the creative process it's not that difficult. It is up to us to practice it and, and to allow ourselves to explore different ideas. Um, so in this session, um, we were referred to this approach where we will normally take inspirations from existing playful and gameful activities, which can inform the design of new experiences. So in this case, this is one of the approaches that we implement in Game Changers uh, which is a remixing play into a game plan uh, approach. Uh, it is an iterative process where we encourage the co-creation and testing of new ideas. The aim is to build up practice and confidence in 
uh, creating preferable experiences to better our practice rather than to strive for perfection because it will never be perfect. There will always be things that we can improve. Um, you can access uh, the main approach via the QR code on here uh, or directly from the Game Changers website. We will also share the um, uh, slides after the event. Right, so as part of the approach, we often use this flashcard approach for onboarding anyone into practicing into their uh, creative process. So you might want to use the same approach. So the premise is a great idea can stem from something that already exists. So we can take inspirations from existing stuff that we are working on. The same with the video collection. You might get inspired by some of the stuff which are already there. So in this approach, we often use two cards, as you can see on the screen, the topic card and the game card. So the idea is for us to rapidly ideate new game ideas and iterate on those ideas. Or we can pick new cards and then start creating different game ideas just to keep us into the process of practicing um, and exercising our creative muscle. So for instance, on the screen, we have social responsibilities as a topic. And how can we use the inspiration from Pictionary as a game for us to create a new playful activity for addressing this specific topic, which is social responsibilities. So an example of a new game that can come up from this could be perhaps we can have two or multiple team competition where one team will draw pictures to illustrate some social challenges. And the other teams will need to guess what those challenges are and how they will mitigate them. So this is an example of how we can actually use these inspirations to create a new playful activities. So this is something that, uh, you know, when I was preparing for this, I thought, oh, so that is actually a good idea. So I might implement it in some of the activities that we are going to run with our own students, with our own communities. Um, so we also have an online version of these cards and also the physical versions of the flashcards, as you can see on my screen now. Um, yep, so we have uh, a few of them to give away um, today as well. Um, so, and you can use them for free and, 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 and you can adapt them and adopt them as you wish. So hopefully that this sets the scene for the next activity where you will be the main actor. Right, so it's your turn. Um, let's flex those creative muscles. I hope that you are ready. It's a bit strange because I can't see the participants on my list, uh, but I'm sure that uh, our team members will be able to see who are going to contribute to this. And you have the chance to own the physical copy of the remixing play flashcards, as you can see on the screen. You have one minute, one minute to create a game idea, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And you can share your ideas on chat, uh, Zoom chat, or you can indicate that you have an idea on chat so that we can ask you to elaborate. And you can also tweet um, with hashtag uh, RemixPlay4. My colleague Sarah will private message you to get your postal address so that we can post the, uh, um, the physical copies to you um, for, your game, for your game ideas that you contribute today. So are you all ready? Are there any questions? No? Yeah? So your one minute starts now.
one minute is over. Uh, I just saw some chat saying that my sound is a bit distorted. Hopefully it's better now. Uh, yeah, so we have some ideas on the chat, I think. I can see one from Kim. Kim, would you like to describe it? I was just thinking if you put a word like got the kids to brainstorm in the first place, all the things that led up to climate change and put a word on each of the Jenga bricks, mm -hmm. then they could start trying to pile them up to see how long it went before it crashed. Fantastic. I think that it's quite interesting. It's like there might be consideration of which one would be the priority in terms of the themes as well. So which one should be in the bottom, which one, which one should be at the top perhaps as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. They could also have colours on them. So you've got to do the green ones first, then the orange ones, then the red ones, or something like that. Fantastic. So <laughs> one deck of cards. Is going to That's going to cost you a lot to send over here, Sylvester. <laughs> we, will, we will send it to you. We, we are so committed to send all this to everyone who wants it. So <laughs> Awesome. Right. So hey. we also have another idea from James. James, oh, James couldn't, couldn't speak to that. I think he's on the way back. So what he says on the chat is we um, color the Jenga tiles based on natural resources, put them out when needed for, um, oh, it's going up. Pull them out when needed for a project of some description and show how fragile the world is. Oh, that is, that is, that is great. So you can actually pull out different things that you want to use for a project and see how it will in the way affect the infrastructure that's 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 in that's interesting so yes james couldn't can speak oh and shubna said that she tweeted herself so can you describe that um shubna of course i can do um so i um thought that maybe if each genja block um had um like problems within environmental issues um, and then when you pull it out with your teams, it will be a teammate based collaborative work. Um, you can look at how to address the problem, but exact, exactly what can you do to address that problem as well? And so it becomes educational. Um, there's collaborative approach, there's teamwork. Um, and I suppose the, the team that has the most sort of solutions that can actually work would then be the winner as a result of it. Fabulous. There you go. It's like three fantastic ideas. And if if you have any any more ideas on this particular game, you can still write it on chat, and one of our team members will will, will contact you privately and get your postal address. But share share your ideas if if there are any new ideas um, on top of what we've heard before. Um, and also, if you want to tweet it as well, you can share it and see if there's anyone out there who will be interested in your game ideas and would like to pursue it with you. Right, since we still have time, I'm going to give you a bonus round. Oop, a bonus round. Um, so this time you have 30 seconds instead of one minute, right? So this is a challenge. And it's the topic is social responsibilities and the game is Cluedo. So your time starts now. <laughs> Right, time, time's up. Anyone who has got an idea of what the game could be? You can put your hand up or you can type it on the chat. Anyone? Anyone from the team, perhaps? Sly, it's Alex here. I've got a kind of idea, maybe. <clears throat> 30 seconds is not long. <laughs> So I was thinking you could do uh, like a kind of version of the Cluedo map, which is traditionally uh, a, a house. So you could potentially do a whole town and then you could have a, a social disaster perhaps that's taken place in that town. And then you could have the, the different spaces in that town to be different, um, maybe businesses, uh, uh, communities and so on. And you have to work out which of the, of the different parts of the town have impacted towards that issue. 
So what is their social responsibility and how have they negatively impacted on their own uh, sort of community, I guess? I like that. I think it's, it's more like a it's more like a physical thing, isn't it? Yes, very much. You can, you can actually go around 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 your town, around your city. And yeah, so that's that is a great idea. Um Kevin Brace saying something about detective. Would you like to elaborate, Kevin? No. <laughs> so <laughs> detective so perhaps um you know that it is it is the game the game is about the de um detective really so it'd be quite interesting to, to to create something where people will go around an escape room perhaps to try and identify different challenges that they will be able to um try and find ways to solve different social responsibility issues and 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 whatnot that's fine Kevin, uh, you missed the start, but we will record this, 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 this as well. And because you actually commented on it, we will still send you the car so that you can try it out at home. <laughs> and Shubna, uh, Shubna, would you like to describe that? Um. Yeah, um, I suppose. Uh, so uh, obviously, you know, if someone is sort of suffering with mental health, I do think that that is a social responsibility to be able to support others that are around us. So um, I suppose, you know, it could be as part of a um, Cluedo inspired board um, and other sort of resources could be educational in the sense that, you know, um, could there be organisations that they can go to? Can they look for other people's friends to, to create that support group? You know, mm -hmm. online resources, all of that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, I haven't really put much thought into it. It was just um, like a quick idea, but um, something that could potentially be um, developed, I think. That is that's great because of that you will get two cards, two decks. You've got two ideas. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I feel spoiled. <laughs> so please guys, if you have any new 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 ideas, you can just uh, drop it on the chat or you can tweet it as well. Right, so that is for a bit of fun. So um we also provide um we are we are we are going to sort of award electronic badges as well for participants as well as contributors through the open badges um, if you have not pre if you're not pre-registered for this we won't we won't have your email addresses to award you the um, badges that you can use in your LinkedIn or can use on social media so on and so forth if, if, if you have not pre-registered please please let us know on chat so that we can we can take your email addresses and the elect electronic badge will be awarded by Coventry University's game changers initiative. So the next, the next section of this, Alex. Let me unmute myself. Okay, you should be able to hear me. Great. So this this section is, is really a discussion section for us all to to talk about some of the things that we've covered in Remix Play. Um, if Sly doesn't mind switching to the next slide, I can show that our first question. But really, we're looking at getting your perspectives and your thoughts on on these questions. So the first one being. What challenges in education uh, do you wish to address? So I know that a lot of you have already been doing this. We've seen some excellent, excellent examples over the past few weeks. Um, so really, we're looking at how, how do you think playful approaches could help address educational challenges? I mean, that is, in essence, what we're, we're talking about here. So it's really, have you had any additional ideas, things that you'd like to do that you haven't had a chance to? We've had some great examples. Um, but there are a lot of people who are attending uh, today throughout the different sessions that won't have had the opportunity to share their ideas or perhaps haven't had an opportunity in their in their institutions, schools and communities to to deliver anything. So really, this is a chance for you to tell us about that. And um, with our community that we're hoping to build, there's different people who might be able to collaborate with you to achieve some of the, uh, the goals that you'd wish to achieve. So if we've got anyone who's got any ideas, then please speak up and uh, let everybody hear. I, I have. This is Kevin speaking. Hello, Kevin. Uh, I'll just turn my video on so you can see me. Yeah, ah, we, we, um, we, I work for the CU group here in Coventry and we deliver compressed degrees over six weeks. 
mod a module is delivered over six weeks. So one of the issues that we've got is because the students so focused quite rightly on the summative assessments, which are delivered in week three and week six, they do not get the opportunity or don't see the relevance of reading around a topic as you would in a usual undergraduate degree in semesters. So consequently, um, we get the issue where they're just, they're just purely, purely focused on the summative assessment and reading around the topic doesn't come into play because, because of the restricted timescales. So um, I've run, we've run some sessions with Lego uh, from, from the DMML, they work very well. So I think, so I think briefly it's that sort of, how can we engage the students into sort of like reading around the topic and, and not just so purely focused on the summative assessment, I would say, that'd be very useful. Right, okay. I mean, uh, if anyone's got any ideas, please feel free to interrupt me. But uh, first thoughts are, what is the assessment that you have them complete in, in the, in the uh, midweek, in the middle of the course and to the end of? Is it like a written Oh, they vary. Assessment? They vary. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any examples? Uh, they're mainly written. They're mainly written, but we do have uh, multiple choice questions, multiple, multiple choice quizzes. Right. Okay. And, so, present, and presentations is one of them. So they have to do a presentation, but that's like a recorded, you know, video to a presentation that they've done. So those yeah. are the sorts. Yeah. I mean, the sort of traditional way we probably see a lot of people, uh, rec you know, have assessments go forward. So one of the things I would perhaps suggest would be a good idea is to try and create a more interactive uh, presentation experience for them. For example, maybe they have to, as a group, produce a podcast. So this could be an episode and you could have a, a theme throughout your, your course and each group or each individual perhaps could, could do a, a different part of the, the various themes that you cover. That way they have to do background research. They may have to bring in a guest or, or, or fellow students to be guests on their, on their podcast episode where they could discuss topics. So in order to do that, you really need to have a good understanding of the topic in question so that you can have that dialogue. I think... The, one of the problems with written assessments, not that, not that there is a problem with them necessarily, but students tend to look at that and think, what am I being taught about? What can I sort of revise, uh, learn and, and understand so I can reproduce that in the written exercise or in on the written presenta uh, oral presentation? Yeah. So I guess if you can mix it up a little bit, give them more of a, a dynamic interactive element to their assessment, they may uh, be more interested in then reading around that subject so they can talk about that in in that kind of more high pressure experience it's kind of like i'm having here where i'm having to think about things that i've done and that things we've seen others at coventry and further afield do uh to to try and answer your question so really yeah. i guess it's putting them in a position where they have to th use their knowledge uh in the moment whereas with even with a presentation that's a very practiced uh process to do that if that makes sense it does thank you yeah then we, we do do group presentations i mean one of the things that we're trying to toy with really is to see if we can get sort of um points points awarded that's the wrong word but um try and get some sort of um you know um award or partial partial uh, points towards the uh, assignment by engaging within aula Yes. by sort of being in, by contributing you know intelligently to a discussion within the feed so this is like an americanism that's been going 20 odd years i've been doing this for donkey's years the americans have but you know with this new breed of hybrid learning this new era of hybrid learning what we want to be able to try and do is to say to students well you know uh, you know online learning isn't just a passive reading of, of a few powerpoints or pdfs you know, contributing intelligently to a discussion after, you know, reading something and then sort of, you know, and then engaging in the discussion. So we'd like to be able to do something like that um, with the staff by, you know, getting the students to actually engage in a, you know, you know, fairly straightforward asynchronous discussion in that respect. Yeah, I think I think that's quite interesting. That it's one of the key challenges, especially with the pandemic. That uh, we 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 work with colleagues across the university as well as. Um, uh, in the different countries is to have questions on how do we create experiences that is going to be useful rather than just delivering content. 
So one thing that we tested out um, sort of like last year was to create an, an, an escape room version of Teams. The reason why we use yeah. Teams meeting is because everyone is using it. So, you know, how can we turn something that is so boring like Teams meeting platform into something that is going to be interactive? So we created escape rooms using the same functionalities of Teams, using OneDrive, using Google Drive and so on and so forth. So they would learn the skills of navigating through the system. And instead of delivering content, they access content to solve some clues and puzzles and questions and missions and quests. And at the end of it, they learn about social skills, they learn about teamwork, they learn about uh, digital literacy. And it's quite interesting to see how uh, they can actually develop their skills through those experiences. So this link with what we've done previously in terms of trying to take inspirations from existing playful, gameful entertainment sort of um, uh, scenarios and see how can we replicate it into our own practice. So yeah, so um, if, if, you are, if you are interested in that, we have the... Um, guidelines of how you can actually create it. Um, we have it on the Game Changes website under resources. So there is the virtual escape rooms, tutorials and guidelines and examples that you can actually look at and perhaps that could in a way inspire you perhaps. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I went to a conference a couple of years ago with the R Education Academy and they, they'd, someone was doing a, an escape room. She'd made an escape room using OneNote. Yes. And and I thought well, it was just such an excellent idea. Yeah. Um, she demonstrated at the conference. It was yeah, it was in I'm sure it was in New York anyway, a couple of years ago. So yeah, um, we've done we've done escape rooms here, at, um, but those have been physical sort of you know proper escape rooms where we've 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 done a you know a theme yeah. of Halloween or something like that. But um, another thing that um, dredging up from the past years ago, I used to do web quests, um, and those those are really useful because you know that's that's more sort of <clears throat> inquiry inquiry based learning so um the old school web quests again these are about 20 years old now i'm talking about those are also very useful um and we're trying to sort of resurrect that idea as well which kind of you know it's a similar sorts of inquiry based problem based it can be it can be teams, it can be a it can last a day, it can last an entire term. So yeah, web quests and something else that we're kind of starting to look at as a way of, you know, making, you know, the teaching less didactic and much more active. Excellent. Fantastic. Thanks for the uh, input, Kevin. Have we got any more uh, questions from anyone else or, or suggestions, so should, should say? Maybe Kim, Kim, you might want to sort of talk about the assessment approach that you did in the Minecraft uh, Minecraft server. I know that you are looking at resilience. Were there any type of assessment that you did on there that we can actually learn from? Uh, what we did was we gathered a lot of, um, because children in particular have trouble with reflection um, and speaking reflectively, and given they were mainly 13 and 14 year old boys, and trying to get them to reflect on their um, classroom activities. And one of the things we really looked at was um, how to get them to reflect. But in a game situation, they reflect really well because they do actually want to improve their Minecraft out of school. So we were using, because it's an international baccalaureate school, we are using the learner profile as a reflection language and reflection tool. I don't know if anyone knows the learner profile of the IB. Um, and that, that worked really well for some of the boys. Some of the boys still mainly just wanted to play and not reflect at all. But uh, <laughs> you're going to get that. <laughs> yes. But then when I was getting them to do their walkthroughs, because they want, you know, like you make the houses and you do the walkthroughs, yeah. getting them to do a walkthrough video after they've watched all the YouTubers do their walkthroughs, yeah. best way to get reflective practice and reflection happening is what I learned. Fantastic. Is that what you wanted to know, Sylvester? <laughs> it's great because I always believe in reflection, any playful activities, or any game-based activities that you want to include in teaching and learning based on research and based on practice anyway. What I've seen is it is the, the whole intervention program that is important. Where do you want to include the reflection, self-reflection, group reflection, and group discourse? And group discourse is where learning normally happens. 
because they will learn from each other's reflection and having exactly like and then reflecting on the group discourse yeah exactly so those are the things that we need to include in any in every playful activities that that, that we do because sometimes um, you know we, we we also try to encourage students to use any platforms they want to to use for reflections you can even use TikTok if there is something if, if there is your thing I mean, that sort of thing, just, just to encourage the sense of autonomy and, and agency in reflecting to, to the best of their ability and, and to be as honest as possible in terms of the reflection of what they've learned and, and, and whatnot, yeah. Yeah, and what I think is great about like TikTok and the kids with the YouTubers is they've watched people they really admire and they've really looked at how they reflect so they're able to copy it and emulate it. I think that would actually work really well with uni students as well if we were getting them to reflect on their practice or whatever by copying some of these YouTubers and people because they're really reflective when they do their stuff. That's why people watch them. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. I think a lot of YouTubers, uh, what, what a lot of people wish to be a YouTuber, um, it's a, a very aspirational for a lot of young young people to do that. But when you, if you look at any kind of uh, walkthroughs of how YouTubers do what they do, the amount of research they have to do and the amount of background understanding they have is, is massive, just so that they can give that concise, summarized video. And I think that's a really good thing to show uh, students is that the people that they maybe look up to um, are, are putting in a huge amount of work, just like those students would be doing in their in their studies. And to show that that comparison, I think is is quite powerful. Excellent, Arthur. Do you want to elab elab elaborate in your comment, or do you want us to read it? Uh, yeah, so I'm ha happy to elaborate. Sorry, it's sort of a long post. It took me some time to think. Uh, first of all, just uh, excited to be here. But one of I, uh, one of the things that came up to me about um, teaching medical students is that when when I think back when I was a medical student, uh, the technology, especially in games, um, wasn't really that advanced, and we never actually used games. Although there were some games in infancy, but they were not really engaging. And what really inspires me is that if we can use games in terms of especially playful practice is that in anatomy education is that the students when you learn that anatomical knowledge usually will go to the clinics you will see patients but we always we always have this theoretical conversation with with um, with with consultants about what we should do and how we should impact but having a game and having allowing students to practice their knowledge and not just practicing the knowledge because current games current native games i've seen is that you practice your knowledge and at the end it tells you your score points it it makes it very um very didactic it's it's i feel like it's it's kind of like teaching you the knowledge base but it doesn't tell you the story because i feel that when you go into clinical practice when you're meeting real patients every patient has a story that they're telling why they come to the hospital how did they get this disease and how with your treatment how your decision can actually impact their lives and a thought came to me about um, if, if not just in, when you play these games, is that it tells the story from the patient from start to the end and how your decisions. An example, like one of the games that really attracted me was um, I'm trying to think back, like Detroit Become Human, uh, KV Rain. So the decisions that you make impacts the character and that can actually build empathy towards your patient. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, something that um, I wish when I was medical school, I wish I had this, is that. Uh, when I was training, we had to we had to go to this training simulator and we see a mannequin. But an idea came to me, and a game I was playing uh, is that if imagine if you can create uh, a serious game using a simulation genre with a narrative game, and having it in mobile apps that and allows students to and that allows it to be easily disseminated to medical students. So you learn an anatomy, you you learn based on lectures or small groups teaching or in in, in the dissection lab. And then after that, you go home or, or while you're having a lunch and you're just playing this game and practicing your knowledge. That is great, actually, in terms of role play games. This is something that is quite key as well in terms of the stories and the narratives and the fact that when you create characters, you can actually create connection, the emotional connection with those, those characters that would help you to basically learn your uh bedside manners and you know that that sort of thing, which is which is, which is great. So that is relevant for any other uh, work out there, I think. 
so yeah, I think I think there's um, such great um, suggestion and also challenges that you guys have talked about. And I wish that we can actually um, extend the uh, session to talk more about this. But please share share your ideas and everything on on chat, and then uh, we can follow we can follow the app. So we can move on to the second, the final question is where do we go from here? Yeah. Sorry about that. I had a little technical difficulty for a second. Yeah, so it's quite it's quite great to hear your conversations here and how active this this discussion has already been. And that kind of leads on to this next thing: is what can't, what do you want to see come from this community? So we've had some ideas of how we might expand upon the Remix Play concept, which is you know an expansion of the the Game Changers community itself. So. How, how would you like to see this community grow? We're looking for any ideas you might have. So if you've got any ideas, please feel free to speak up now or pop them in the chat. Um, a couple of examples to start you off. We've been considering the potential of using um, Discord. If anyone, any of you out there are familiar with it, it's, uh, it's a, like a kind of like Slack and Teams, but it's very much game focused originally. So we were considering the idea of using Discord as a self-moderating online community that we can have with the Remix Play uh, name associated to it, which is, has a, a growing community over the last five years. So uh, it sounds like other people have thought the same thing. Kim loves it, uh, Shubna likes it. I know that James does because he uses it for his uh, Kotoba Miners classes. And also I think Anne-Louise Dobson uses it for her innovation lab. So. A whole, a whole host of different people are familiar with this platform. So we think it's a great potential place to do this. Um, but again, it depends on what others think of it, really. Uh, I did mention in the chat, we talked about something called Gather, which might be a great uh, platform for some virtual escape rooms. Uh, but this is, it's kind of like a retro sort of RPG designed environment where you can walk around in it and move into different rooms and discuss things. So. We thought it'd be great to have a main community in Discord, for example, but also have this, this kind of virtual physical space uh, in Gather that we could potentially have small events on or, or little sort of office hour groups where people can pop in and, and have a chat about different subject matters. So we think this has got real potential, especially with the different channels we can have in Discord. And as, as today has proven, uh, we, we gave a, a small amount of time for some questions at the end and there's clearly a lot of people who have a lot of thoughts so being able to take this to a new, a new space where different uh, groups can talk about different themes and potentially find collaboration uh, across the world where different people have got maybe budgets and uh, or free time to uh, address different ideas or are looking for others to collaborate with then we think this could be really good so uh, if you've got any thoughts please uh, please share them used to use second life years ago that worked very well yeah we, we thought about stuff like that second life's one of those things that um again from from my perspective I, i'm a big fan of frugal education so different ways that we can do some of these great things but without the the, the technical issues of say having a computer that can run second life and, and being in a position to uh have yeah, all of the, the you know equipment needed whereas something yeah. like discord which we can we can run on a phone or on an ipad or tablet or similar device yeah. um it gives everyone the opportunity to to be able to access this and, and work together even if you don't have a large internet connection uh, a large broadband connection should i say you would then still be able to have a, a text chat in that group so i love uh, yeah, the idea yeah, yeah, behind yeah. Yeah. Second life, but I think it it does it does create a bit of a barrier for for a lot of people to enter into, especially when we've got such an international audience for Remix Play, where you know the the access to these things is not as universal as perhaps might be in in the, the UK and, and America, for example. No, it's a fair point. It's just worth. I mean, it might be just worth somebody doing a demo of it whenever, because it's still up there and running. I think I looked at it about a year ago resurrected my old character which has been sat there for about 10 years doing nothing but you're right i mean it's it's the it's the hardware issue isn't it that's the problem um Absolutely. and it always has been and the openness of it you can just get random people um just dropping into a conversation if you haven't bought the space 
you know, if you're yeah. using an open space, you can just get random weird people dropping in, just, yeah, doing weird <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think that's the great thing as well now with a lot of open web technologies. There are alternatives to, to things like this, which can run in a browser. Um, they're, they're kind of like when I mentioned Gather, a lot of people, I, I heard of it through Sylvester, for example, um, and immediately loved it. Um, but there are a lot of these little things out there that different groups might have heard of or used in, in, in education or just in social environments that, that might work really well um, as an alternative, which is a, lot of, a lightweight version of perhaps what you would have done in Second Life. So this is, again, one of those things that we could talk about in, in a group like this to as a bit of a meta discussion, but uh, yeah. uh, definitely different platforms that we could potentially use to, to have conversations within. That's that's that that's great. So I think um, um, I think one thing that we, we we would wish to do is for us to continue these conversations. And as I said in the beginning, previously that we will provide the expression of interest uh, in terms of the link that you can actually access from the Remix, Remix Play Four website, where you can actually let us know if you would wish to contribute uh, new ideas or contribute new videos on different practices that you are doing to showcase it or you want to um, suggest any different types of activities that we should run together as a community or if there's anything that you would wish to run with us something that you you, you feel strongly about that you want other people to be involved in and some some other suggestions that, that you might have for how we can actually move forward with this because i do believe that uh, we have a fantastic community um and i think we should we should try and do something together in all sorts of different ways and i quite like this quote um, that i put on on the screen and it says that when people align around shared political social economic or environmental values and take collective action the thinking and the behavior that compromise the lives of millions of people around the world can truly change so I think we can start small. There are a lot of things that we can actually do together. And I've seen the, the videos that we have collected so far that are so inspiring in so many different ways. And, and, and we, it would be, be great for us to continue building on top of that and expand it with new resources and new inspirations that could link to your own work and your practice. So um, we are coming to an end. Um, so I think we are about a few minutes uh, uh, um, over the one hour period. Um, and it's such a fantastic opportunity to really, um, you know, organize and, 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 and run Remix Play for regardless of the pandemic. And, and, and of course, we would have loved to see everyone in a physical sense where we can actually run hands on sessions, which we have always done in the previous Remix, Remix Play one, two and three. But this is an opportunity for us to develop on this community. So there might be activities that you want to run in your own organization that you want others to be involved in. We will be happy to partner with you. Um, and hopefully, uh, once everyone has been vaccinated, we can all move around and uh, continue doing what we do best in a physical sense. And of course, we can learn a lot of things from the digital uh, you know, um, intervention that we have done for the past year and a half or so. And some of the videos talk about those interventions of how they respond to the pandemic. So have a look at all those videos and spread the word as well. Spread the word and, and uh, let uh, your colleagues, your connection, your network know about this. And uh, uh, just share the uh, uh, Remix Play for main page. Uh, there are all those videos there. And the link for the expression of interest is on the screen. Um, that will allow you to contribute more about your thoughts and your ideas and how we can actually move forward with the community. So um, the next session, which will be the same as this, but with three new fantastic fellas, we got Gilson, Luca and Carlo, who will be hosting the uh, South, uh, North and Central America and some of the other speakers will be there as well. And we will we, we and and we will be there as well since it's um it's a good time for us in the UK and some of you who are in Australia I think it's bedtime I think <laughs> so yes yeah, so thank you very much everyone and thank you very much to the team and uh, have a great day and stay safe and we will post you 
the cards. So make sure that you provide us with your postal address so that we can post it to you. And I have to remember that I need to send two copies to Shubna because she has provided two game ideas. So <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks all. Take care. Yes.